Abilities are everything in Pokemon. This is the Golden Go Theorem. Wait, sorry, wrong channel. As time has gone on in Pokemon, there's been a pretty significant amount of power creep. This can be found within items, stats, and especially abilities. While abilities used to just like make you sometimes poison things or make you immune to ground moves, now they foul your taxes, make you immune to all status moves, and even walk the kids to school. Thanks, Golden Go. But just how busted are these abilities in Pokemon? How ridiculous have things gotten? Today, let's talk about the strongest abilities in competitive Pokemon. If you enjoyed this video at Ampli in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content just like this. Also, you should definitely subscribe now because I have a playlist full of content for you to check out right after this video. And if you think you're subbed, go ahead and double check because only like half of my viewers actually are. With that, let's get right into the video. But first, a word from our sponsor, the join button. Click it for bonus content and get a cool badge next to your name. It's epic. Okay, so Golden Go is stupid, but not in the bad way. Like, whenever I click Choice Specs, Terra Steel, Make It Rain, I say, Oh, this goes stupid. Another thing the kids claim, Go Stupid, has to be its exclusive ability, Good As Gold. This ability does one thing and one thing alone, but that one thing is like a million things. It makes it so Golden Go is immune to all status moves. This means it's immune to Spore, Taunt, Thunder Wave, Eerie Impulse, and literally everything else that doesn't do damage. Keep in mind, there are other abilities that make you immune to Taunt or Paralysis. This thing just kind of does it all with one big umbrella. Granted, it does make it immune to Helping Hand and Heal Pulse, but it genuinely doesn't miss these moves. Puff still works on it though, so thanks Amoongus. This ability makes it so Golden Go, with its Steel Typing and Ghost Typing, basically can't be stopped from doing whatever it wants turn 1, short of just KOing it right away. Golden Go wouldn't be nearly as reliable in VGC if it could be slept turn 1 or taunted to prevent it from clicking Nasty Plot and hitting the Nasty on your whole team. In singles, it's even more egregious, as Golden Go is one of the most reliable hazard removal blockers in the game. It's immune to Rapid Spin due to its Ghost Typing, Mortal Spin due to its Steel Typing, and Defog due to its ability good as gold. So if it's on the field, the hazards aren't going anywhere. Luckily, if your name is Furt or Mousehold, you really couldn't care less due to Tidy Up. But Game Freak seems to have a bit of favoritism for modern steel types. Corviknight was simply the Gen 8 Regional Route 1 bird, but thanks to its ability, it manages to remain relevant in basically any format it's allowed in. Mirror Armor is just a straight up upgrade to the ability Clear Body. While Clear Body prevents the user from having any of its stats lowered by the opponent, Mirror Armor does the exact same thing by reflecting the stat drops against the opponent. Yeah, Metagross might not be able to be intimidated, but Corviknight holds a mirror up to Landorus's ugly face and makes him regret leaving the house today. It's due to this ability that Corviknight is able to be a reliable setup Pokemon by combining Bulk Up and Roost and some offensive moves to sweep unprepared teams. This ability even carries it in modern VGC, where it has to compete among the likes of Fluttermane and Raging Bolt. Len Duel even managed to bring it to top 4 at the Knoxville Regional Championships on a very unconventional Sand Team. Its positive matchup into the likes of King Gambit and Gouging Fire made it a force to be reckoned with at the event. Galar was actually home to a number of Pokemon with broken abilities, not the least of which had to be Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl would be nothing without Prankster. This ability isn't exclusive to it as it's actually the reason for a number of bottom tier Pokemon seeing Day 2 and Top Cut usage across multiple formats. For reference, earlier this year, Marcus Dion managed to take an Illumise to Day 2 at Peoria Regionals. Jamie Boyd even won a regional with Cottony once, he'll definitely tell you that if you ever talk to him. Point is, turning all status moves into a priority move is a busted ability, unless you're facing down Golden Go of course. This allowed for Tornadus and Whimsicott to set up Tailwind, Grimmsnarl to set up Screens and Parting Shot, and for Sableye to leave the cave occasionally. Another busted addition to Galar was the ability of Neutralizing Gas. While this ability was introduced in Galar, it was gifted to both Galarian Weezing and Cantonian Weezing. But what does this ability do? Well, it turns off all the other busted abilities on this list. Look, abilities really make or break a Pokemon, unless that Pokemon is Iron Hands, it really didn't need one to do everything it did in 2023, trust me. But once you have a Pokemon turning off all abilities, it can mess with a ton of leads and strategies. No Prankster Tailwind means that Pokemon like Roaring Moon, for a while, was the fastest Tailwind setter in the game after a booster energy allowing for Tailwind to go up and for the partner Weezing to outspeed and taunt opposing Prankster Tailwind setters like Tornadus. This also disables Intimidate to help partner physical attackers and, scariest of all, release the beast known as Regigigas. Now, I've explained Regigigas Weezing in about a million videos, so you can actually check those videos out after this one to get more details about its viability. Basically, my point is that the ability to turn off all other abilities is kinda broken as it makes all the other abilities in this video completely useless. 
Well, except for As One. As One is quite possibly the most conceptually busted ability in the game. As One combines two abilities into one allowing for Calyrex Shadow Rider and Ice Rider to have very limited counterplay. It combined either Chilling Nay or Grim Nay, abilities which raised attack or special attack respectively with every KO the Pokemon took, with Unnerve. Unnerve makes it so no opposing Pokemon would be able to consume berries as long as the user was on the field. Berries can do a number of important things in Pokemon, from race stats, to healing, to reducing damage from a certain type of move. With this disabled, opponents in Generation 8 were unable to stop a Pokemon like Choice Specs Calyrex Shadow Rider from snowballing through their entire team. Beyond that, it wasn't turned off by neutralizing gas for reasons, I guess? I don't know. All I really know is that this Pokemon didn't get nerfed after Generation 8, even after Zacian, Regieleki, and even Zamazenta got nerfs. But do you know what did get nerfed? Urshavu. Well, at least one of them. Unfortunately, this nerf was only to Urshifu's single strike signature move of Wicked Blow. It went from 80 base power to 75. Big whoop. Unfortunately, they didn't do anything about the ability which made Urshifu truly busted. Urshifu's single strike and rapid strike have access to the ability Unseen Fist. What does this do? Well, in singles, nothing super important, but in doubles, it makes them objectively one of the strongest Pokemon in history. Unseen Fist makes it so all of Urshifu's contact moves now hit through Protect. This means that counterplay to Urshifu, similar to Calyrex, is extremely limited. Not only can Wicked Blow and Surging Strikes not have their damage cut by screens or Intimidate, but now you can't even block the damage for a turn by clicking Protect to try to get into a better position. Keep in mind, even Z moves and Max moves back in Generations 7 and 8 had their damage reduced through Protect. So why not Unseen Fist? You can make the argument that this would make the ability completely useless, you'd just be wrong and a little dumb. Even if the damage a move does was corded through Protect, both Urshifus would still be able to pick off opponents at low health as well as have their Choice Scarf sets always be able to pivot with U-Turn on lead. I genuinely hope this gets nerfed next generation because the lack of a rework between Generation 8 and 9 have led to these two dominating the format for months. While Gen 8 did give us a ton of busted abilities, Gen 9 wasn't so innocent either. I already covered good as gold, but its cousin Purifying Salt is arguably just as strong if given to the right Pokemon. Purifying Salt is basically two abilities wrapped into one. This makes it so the Garganical line isn't able to be statused at all. This means no sleep, no burn, no paralysis, and most importantly, no poison. This is huge because as a physical attacking wall with access to great stall options like Salt Cure for chip damage and Recover for recovery, its biggest weakness should be getting statused. Beyond this, it makes the whole line take half damage from all ghost type moves. Normally, Rock isn't that great of a defensive typing, for some reason you'd figure Rocks would be better at defense, but when you add a ghost resist among everything else that type has, it can make it a crazy wall in BGC and singles by allowing it to more or less be able to stall out Pokemon like Fluttermane and Golden Go with a proper Terra choice. This combination of abilities all wrapped into one kind of reminds me of Generation 7's Water Bubble. This ability was granted to the Araquanid line. Water Bubble was basically three abilities in one. It makes the user take half damage from all fire moves, prevents them from being burned, and even doubles the power of all water moves. Araquanid in Generation 7 and even some of Gen 9 was a massive threat. As a bug water type, it would normally take neutral damage from fire moves, but Water Bubble reduced it back to a resistance. And by combining Liquidation from Araquanid with either Waterium Z in Generation 7 or a Terra Water in Generation 9, it could basically guarantee a one-hit KO against even resisted targets. My point is, this ability would be busted on anything with a higher attack stat than 70, and even then, Game Freak was kind of pushing it with the power on this thing. Jumping back to Generation 9, we have Toxic Debris. This ability is what gives Glamora its viability. It makes it so if the user is hit by a physical attack, they'll automatically set up toxic spikes on the opponent's side of the field. So basically, whenever you attack a Glamora with a physical attacker, you're making a trade. There's a good chance that taking the KO against it will mean that for the rest of the game, any Pokemon you send out will now be poisoned. Every protect the opponent clicks will be a devastating turn for you due to the sheer amount of chip damage you can expect to take. Leftovers, Focus Sashes, they're all down the drain as soon as you hit this thing. It can be a really tough call to make. This led to Glamora being a staple on Don Dozo archetypes. Since the user can lead off with Glamora with a strong attacker next to it, deal massive damage, lay down some spikes, and use the poison to knock things into range of Don Dozo's plus 2 Earthquake. 
It's a strategy that was so reliable, it was created all the way back in Regulation A and still sees consistent usage in Regulation F, despite the introduction of new legendary Pokemon to the metagame. Speaking of legendary Pokemon, we should cover two of the most influential quartets of legends that have busted abilities, allowing them to be viable. First off are the Guardian Deities. Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Tapu Fini, and Tapu Bulu. These dudes all have terrain surge abilities, which cause them to set up their respective terrains on the field whenever they're sent into battle. These terrains provide passive effects, like Electric Terrain preventing sleep or Grassy Terrain giving everything leftovers recovery, alongside a 30% boost in power to their respective typing of move. Except Misty Terrain, it just nerfs Dragon types. Very appropriate considering that's what fairies were literally invented to do back in Generation 6. All these terrains were so influential to the competitive scene in Generation 7 that you'd rarely see the battlefield. You'd usually just see some lemonade spilled all over the floor or a very off-putting shade of green. The other quartet with bust abilities are the Treasures of Ruin, Chi Yu, Chen Pao, Wo Chen, and Ting Lu. All of these guys' abilities passively reduce a stat for every Pokemon except themselves. Chi Yu lowers special defense by 25%, making it a devastating special attacker. Chen Pao lowers defense by 25%, making it a devastating physical attacker. Ting Lu lowers special attack by 25%, making it an incredible wall. And Wo Chen lowers physical attack by 25%, making you wish the ability was on a better Pokemon. These four dominated the Regulation C metagame and onwards by setting the pace of battles to either be a crawl or a sprint depending on who was on the field. Chen Pao even made it so Dragonite was one of the most powerful Choice Band Pokemon in history since it could click Terra Normal Choice Band E speed and just invalidate offensive teams. Of course, the pace of a battle can be slowed by other abilities. Take for example Intimidate and Regenerator. We're tackling these two together because Amoongus really loves Intimidate partners in VGC. Intimidate is an ability created all the way back in Generation 3, which causes the opposing team's attack stat to be lowered by one stage every time the user hits the field. Pokemon like Arcanine, Landorus, and Incineroar have been synonymous with competitive Pokemon due to their access to this ability. An Intimidate Pokemon can be a clutch switch-in to allow for a partner Pokemon to tank a hit it would have otherwise folded to and retaliate to win a match. This ability activating every time a user switches out and in means that it combos really well with Regenerator which is an ability that heals the user for one-third of their health every time they switch out. Pokemon like Amoongus are able to stay alive in a match for a frustratingly long period of time by hitting the field, clicking Spore or Rage Powder, and immediately cycling back out to their Intimidate partner, lowering the opponent's attack and making it even harder to KO the Regenerator Pokemon once it comes back in. This ability carries certain Pokemon in singles due to the frequency of switching in those formats, such as Generation 7 Tornadus Therian and even Alola Mola in Generation 9 OU singles. Finally, the ability I cannot forget or I would get at least a million comments is huge power. Also, pure power, you're not special meta champ, it's literally the same ability, why do you have to have a different name for it? These abilities do one thing and one thing alone. It passively doubles the user's attack stat. So where normally an Azumarill will only have a maximum attack stat of 218 at level 100, meaning it hits exactly as hard as Oddish, after huge power it has an attack stat of 436, making it closer to, oh I don't know. Crowd on. This ability makes it so this little bunny thing hits almost as hard as this behemoth. Also, funnily enough, it makes it so Azuril, a baby Pokemon, actually has a pretty similar attack stat to Cobalion. Go figure. Imagine being about as strong as this adorable little Squishmallow. Also, as a sight tangent, um, the lack of Azuril merch is absolutely criminal. I demand more Azuril merch on the Pokemon website. Also, Wonder Guard. It makes you immune to everything that isn't super effective, but I really don't need to go on for a paragraph explaining how that'd be broken with anything over 1 HP. But those are the most broken abilities in Pokemon. I'm sure some people will have opinions about how I should have included Technician or something, but I really wanted to limit this video to strictly abilities which can make or break a Pokemon or control the entire pace of a battle. But still, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, it would really mean the world to me. And if you want to support me further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos as well as some bonus content. You'll also see your name at the end of my videos like all of these people. And a special thanks to my most boosted supporters Avatar67, Kanor, Narwiz, Jordan Harridge, and Halo for their generous pledges. Another way to support me is to check out all the videos in the playlist and screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll really enjoy. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.